We're now less than six months away from the release of the Final Fantasy VII Remake on PlayStation 4, but if the new Tokyo Game Show trailer is anything to go by, boy are we going to have a serious game on our hands come next March. Not only did we get to see the promised reveal of the Turks, but the trailer also unveiled a brand new character and what some of the classic summons will now look like. They also showed off some reimagined enemies and bosses, we got to see some mini games, new and old, and perhaps more importantly, we got to see Tifa doing pull ups. But that's just the start of what was revealed, because even though it was just shy of 3 minutes long, this trailer was packed full of new content and reimagined content, with some of it being rather blatant and some of it being a bit more subtle. In general though, it really served to show that Square Enix are not messing around. They will be using Final Fantasy VII as a base, but the remake is not just being done to bring that game into the modern era. They will be building upon the original in a big way by complementing and paying tribute, while also building out where necessary. And as we run through everything the trailer covered, you will start to see what this looks like and how things will be changing. So with that in mind, perhaps the best place to start is with the characters they revealed. We knew that they were going to be showcasing the Turks, and they didn't disappoint in this regard. We got to see Reno, Rude and Sung in glorious new detail, and there were some interesting tweaks made in each instance. In the case of Reno, well, his design seems quite similar to what we saw within Advent Children. He has a black suit as opposed to the blue suit in the original, and he's also got black goggles as opposed to grey. The zipper on his blazer has also seemingly been removed. There have been some much more subtle changes though. For example, the rim around his goggles is now much more pronounced, and his face has been made to look a bit more gaunt. Perhaps the main difference though, is that Reno's shirt has a few more buttons undone than in Advent Children, but it does seem to be more in line with the original design. Reno's Electro Mag Rod has also been spruced up. It features a nice Shinra logo on the handle, and thanks to the addition of a new boss fight during the initial meeting in the Sector 5 church, we will get to see Reno use it much more than in the original game. It also looks like Rude will have a bigger part to play within the remake, as the trailer featured him squaring off against Cloud and Aerith without any backup, which was great to see. During this fight, we even got to see him pick Cloud up before tossing him at Aerith. In terms of his appearance, Rude now looks much more suave compared to his original design, but also compared to what we saw in Advent Children. Like Reno, his suit is now black and the zipper appears to be gone, but he's also sporting less earrings on the left ear. Perhaps the main difference though, is that he now has a very dark purple shirt, as opposed to the white shirt he'd previously worn. This is complemented by a dark purple pocket square and a nicely patterned black tie. What we saw of Sung was very brief, but it was long enough to narrow down on some specific design changes. Sung also had a black suit as opposed to blue, and the zipper is also seemingly gone, but everything else remained pretty consistent with his original design from Final Fantasy VII. The only slight change is that his hair now appears to be more flowing, as it's draped over his shoulders, and he has an earring on his left ear. Another character that everyone has been desperate to see is Don Corneo, and within this trailer we got to see our first glimpse of the notorious rogue. Compared to his original concept art, Corneo has gone through an extremely faithful transition. His hair was on point, his handlebar moustache was on point, and his medallion looked great while glistening in a mountain of chest hair. His frilly white shirt has been touched up a little, with new black accents on his collar, but the mob boss coat, complete with fur around the neck and wrists, was a sight to behold. The only thing we didn't get to see was his rather garish tattoo, but given how faithful everything has been so far, it's bound to be there. As part of this sequence, we also got to see how stunning Aerith will look in her glamorous red dress. Compared to the original game, this has been significantly embellished upon, with a whole new train, different shoes, a new star-shaped necklace, and a charm on the ankle strap of her shoe. President Shinra and Heidegger also made an appearance within the trailer, but not in a literal form. In a new twist compared to the original game, President Shinra will no longer appear in person in Reactor 5 and will instead taunt the group as a hologram. 
During this sequence, he made mention of the Wutai War, which featured during Crisis Core to help build up Sephiroth's character. This may hint to more exposition around this particular plotline in future games, and it could be the basis for integrating Wutai into the game in a mandatory way, as opposed to it being optional like in the original game. Perhaps one of the biggest surprises from the trailer though, was that it featured someone completely original. This character currently has no name, and may just end up being a throwaway boss fight, but what's interesting is that they are a member of Soldier, as denoted by Cloud's observation, but also the Soldier branding that appears on the hilt of the sword. Within the original game, although you do fight against generic Soldier 3rd, 2nd and 1st class, there was nobody that would be seen as on par with Sephiroth, Angeal, Genesis or Zack. Initial guesses are that this could be someone like Kunsul or Luxier from Crisis Core, who could be perhaps looking to avenge their friend after seeing Cloud wielding the Buster Sword. The inclusion of this character, whoever he may be, might also help to give Soldier a bit more depth. They were used against Avalanche in Before Crisis, so it would make sense that Shimra would use them again, but it could also be used to provide contextual validation for Cloud's claims around his background, if he's able to best this new foe. Another interesting change relates to the segment of the game when the plate collapses on Sector 7. Within the original game, only core members of Avalanche attempted to stop Shinra, but within the remake, we can clearly see other people fighting alongside Jesse, Biggs and Wedge. We also got to see the Watchers of Fate featuring in a new sequence outside the 7th Heaven Bar, suggesting that their role will be quite important and won't just be isolated to Aerith and Cloud. From a gameplay perspective, the trailer featured plenty of new snippets of information, and we've also learnt more from supporting materials. Square Enix has also decided to lift the lid on the demo that was showcased at E3 and Gamescom, allowing publications to make their playthroughs public, so definitely go and check that out if you have the time. Perhaps the coolest thing they showed though, was the summons. Within the TGS trailer, we got to see both Ifrit and Shiva in their elemental glory. Now what's interesting about this, is that within the original game, these summons were not obtainable without cheating until you've left Midgar. So that kind of opens things up for more early acquisitions of summons from the original roster. We do already know that certain editions of the game will come with summon pre-order bonuses. But who knows how far they will go when it comes to classics like Ramu, Odin and Bahamut. Based on a pamphlet that was available on the show floor, we also know that summons can be equipable as materia, but it sounds as though they can only be used within certain battles. When they are summoned, they will be autonomous in battle, but you can give commands for them to use special abilities, which kind of makes it sound like it will be a combination of the systems used in Final Fantasy XII and XIII. Within the same pamphlet, it was also noted that the Final Fantasy VII Remake will indeed feature a Materia growth system, but no further details were divulged at this time. Outside of summons? Well, the trailer gave us a glimpse at how one of the most important status effects from the original game will be implemented, as we got to see Frog in action. As you would expect, when afflicted with this particular status, the characters will turn into a frog but it was the details that made it rather special. We got to see it cast on Cloud, but after turning into a frog, Cloud still sported a mini buster sword while leaping around, and it's going to be great to see how this translates to the other characters within the final game. In addition to the visual change, the trailer also showed that when characters are in frog status, they will have a modified moveset, as Cloud was able to perform either a standard attack or use bubble breath. Something else that made a successful return in the trailer was the Squat minigame that's a prominent part of the Don Corneo questline. Within the original game, Cloud had to perform squats by pressing buttons in a specific order, and if he was able to perform more squats than his AI opponent, he would receive a better item from Big Bro, which could be used to impress Corneo. In the remake, this holds true, but there's a new addition, pull-ups. Now it's unclear if this will also be part of the same questline, or it will just be another mini game that's accessible from the gym, but within the trailer, we got to see Tifa pushing for some gains. That wasn't the only new mini game either, as we also got to see Cloud playing some darts, so yeah. One of the coolest parts of the remake trailers for me, has always been looking at how they've reimagined the various enemies that appear within the original game, especially as some of them were pretty messed up. 
So far, we've been able to see new interpretations of quite a wide selection of enemies, and within this new trailer, a few more were added to the list, the first of which is the Elagor. In the original game, this particular enemy appeared within the train graveyard, and due to how much it's been spruced up, some were led to believe that it was actually Odin. We can confirm though, that it is not Odin, it's Elagor. There were also quite a few types of Shinra soldiers featured within the original game, and we've already seen a few variants within the remake. In this trailer, we got to see another one, as a member of the attack squad was accompanying Reno during his introductory sequence. This represents a slight change from the original game, but it's only minor. We also got to see another boss encounter featured, as Cloud, Tifa and Barrett square off against the 100 gunner within the trailer. Within the original game, this was fought towards the end of the Midgar sequence, when Red 13 and Aerith were in the party, so it will be interesting to see if that continuity is kept in check, and this is just a piece of placeholder footage, as they don't want to reveal everything yet. As much as it was great to see these enemies though, it was also nice to see plenty of variety in terms of the wider art direction. Everything we had seen to date was quite dark and dingy, but within this trailer, there were plenty of scenes where things were much brighter, even when under the plate. We also got to see more destructible scenery with Barrett powering through some concrete, and on the funny side of things, we got to see a scene where the development team poked fun at the inconvenient size of the Buster Sword. After being startled by a hallucination of Sephiroth, Cloud attempted to wield his sword, but whacked it into a door frame by accident. The extra story exposition was also much more blatant and clear. We got to see the aforementioned sequence with Reno and Rude, but there were plenty of new scenes featuring Avalanche. They were parachuting and taking part in a new bike sequence, and this suggests we will be spending a lot more time with Jesse, Biggs and Wedge, doing missions that perhaps weren't featured within the original game. This will no doubt make what happens in Sector 7 much more emotional, and we can already see from the final shot in the trailer that they're going to try and make that particular chain of events much more impactful because that scene looked simply amazing from a visual perspective. And as we're talking about that scene, that means we're at the end of the trailer, so it feels like the perfect time to wrap things up. How are you guys feeling about everything now? Because I can tell you without any doubt that Lauren and I are definitely way more stoked than we were before we saw this trailer. All I can say is, roll on the 3rd of March, 2020. Feel free to let us know in the comments what your favourite part of the trailer was, and if you enjoyed this rundown, then please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Alright guys, this is Daryl, signing out. I'd like to extend a big thank you to all our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, and of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.